Hello friends, welcome to another video. It's been a while I have done a video because I had a new system and setting this whole thing up. So I hopefully this video turns out good. Uh, this is the first video after my new setup. Um, anyhow, um, what we're going to talk about today is uh, improving um, metric visual and uh, showing the measures on the rows. Uh, I know there is a way that in, in Matrix Visual, in the format section, you can say that you can show on the rows, but that turns each measure go on the rows. But here what we want is, let's say if we're looking at the sales and the previous sales, we want the sales as an KPI on the row and current month and the previous month or current year to date or previous year to date on the columns. So I'm gonna uh, walk through um, how that will improve the visualization in Matrix Visual. Uh, let's get to Power BI and take a look. I have a very simple model here, uh, just a dummy data. What I have is uh, I have a sales, uh, sorry, tickets. I usually have a sales uh, fact, but uh, this one is more on tickets. So I have a tickets, tickets open and closed in a month and how many are outstanding, which is tickets open minus closed and the closed percentage. And then we have a previous month tickets open, previous month closed, and so forth, so on. What do you see here is we have one, two, three, four, four my years for current month, like August, and four for the previous month, right? So if we look at September, so we have 281 tickets open this month and 169 open in the previous month. And then we can have some sort of a plus minus variance as well. But I'm not talking about the variance here. I'm just, uh, because this is more about improving the matrix visual. And if you look at that, the way current it has been done, um, and if we go and tickets data, so what I have here is a uh, tickets open. That's just a count rows of that, um, number of rows in my table closed is, where the user relationship again, I don't want to go into user relationship and all this stuff, pretty common stuff. So basically we have um, my year for each and every calculation. And then I drop those, like as you can see on values, I have dropped all those eight my years. Now, this this is just the eight my years. We can have a more than this, right? Then we will have a scroll bar. Let's say if we have a variance, variance percentage changes and all this stuff. And something like this will come and happen at that point of time. And depending on how we are visualizing the data, and maybe we have more uh, visuals on the page and we don't have the whole real estate to uh, widen our uh, matrix visual. So what is the right way to and how else we can improve this? One way is again, as I said, show on rows. If we go and if you haven't seen this, like you can go in a format and then search on show and there will be an option on uh, show on rows um actually is it rows let's see what that is sorry it's called switch values to rows and if i go and click turned on so what happens is now all the measures of course this is now one it's a column uh, with, but all the measures has now dropped down on um on the rows uh, this seems pretty complicated to um, read like if you want to compare like tickets open with ticket uh, previous month tickets open next to each other and also on the variance this would be very complex to read as well uh, so we're gonna switch values back to on uh, off turn it off so that the measures are back on the columns so what is another way to do that so I'm gonna show you guys how uh, I did that and what we're gonna do is we're gonna take an advantage of our friend calculation groups I love calculation groups. I have tons of videos on calculation groups do check out those videos I'm not gonna go too deep into calculation group in this video, but I'm gonna show the technique how to do it But if you really want to learn calculation groups do check out my other videos a playlist on on calculation group so what uh, I actually I already did it so what, what I did is uh, First, I created two dummy measures and I call them and I will show you why I created those. One is called current. That is just a blank, no value assigned to it. It's just a blank value. And the other one is called previous. Again, this is again, simply current and previous two measures and it does not have any value assigned to it. And uh, what I did is I created a, a two calculation groups to achieve the result. Let me show you what those 
two calculation groups are i'm gonna jump into um tabular editor um version two again that's a free version of tabular editor to author calculation groups but again i just want to point out that you can also use now power bi desktop to author um uh, develop calculation groups as well to do so if you haven't explored already how to do that uh, you go to the model view tab and if you go to model then this is where you can add the calculation groups as you can see there is already two calculation groups but i'm more comfortable working with the tabular editor so i will be jumping to tabular editor but you can achieve the same within power bi desktop as well um, so what i'm going to do is external tool and go to tabular editor and let's see if yeah okay shows up on another screen so here it is what is the two different um, um, calculation groups are the first one is just the KPI is what we want to see on the rows right whatever we want to see on the rows uh, in this particular case we want to see the open tickets close ticket outstanding tickets and the close percentage on the rows right so those are the four calculation items I created in a calculation group so calculation group is called CG KPI column name is called KPI and then I have created four different KPIs if I have more KPIs I want to add I can add more calculation items in this particular case I have only four of these so one is called open so what I did in that calculation group uh, item just says okay when I use this open calculation item from my CG KPI then it will return tickets opened my year I, I i don't have to create the my years if i really want i can actually create those my years write the my years expression in here but i have created the my years tickets open and uh, the reason is they i might be using it somewhere else as well um so then again for tickets close it's just that uh, for close it's uh, tickets closed uh, again you can label it whatever you want to um, name it and then outstanding is ticket outstanding and close rate is um, basically open minus closed divided by open that is our percentage whatever the business formula is so that is the first thing i i did what does this means let's take a look so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go back to my matrix visual i'm going to remove all these my years which i created and now we have just month in here and for my CG KPI, my KPI, I'm going to put that as part of my on the rows. So what it will happen is now we have in a hierarchy. Of course, it will give an error. We haven't added any measure. And because these two things, month and KPI, does not have any relationship. That's why we are getting an error. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop my current um, measure, which is again, current is just in a measure is a placeholder. It's a blank. I'm going to drop that on my values. So what is going to happen here? So now you see what it says, open, close, outstanding, close rates. That is per month uh, value what I'm, what I'm seeing. Actually, what I'm going to do is let's put this together, our original matrix as well, um, just to make sure that we are getting the same value, just to compare. So those were tickets opened, close, outstanding, and close percentage so these let's keep these four my years for now so if we look at this our tickets opened is august 169 and 44.97 now that is showing up on the rows right so we use the dummy i can use any my year in here uh, the reason behind i use current i will show you guys why i use that now what happens is in the calculation item it is forcing it to return the uh, what we told in the calculation item and if we go back to our uh, tabular editor here um, so again if we go back to our tabular editor so we each calculation item what we're saying is it is forcing us to return that measure and that's why we are seeing those values here in our uh, in, in our each calculation item open close right whatever I return in calculation item that is what is showing now uh, I, at the same time I want to now show previous uh, right if I put the previous here what is going to happen let's bring it out here so it's going to return the same thing right because it doesn't matter what my year we use everything is returning the same um, it doesn't matter what my year I put it in here it's going to return the same value now what we need to do is we need to extend our logic that when I'm using the previous 
I want to it to calculate the previous month calculation, not to show the same return. What how are we going to do that? So what I did is uh, just to expand this solution, I created another uh, calculation group group called CG period, and what this period means is like now I have a a two calculation item in this one. One is showing the previous month. And the other one is showing the previous year to date. And uh, what I'm doing here is this is where the name of that current and previous come in the picture. What I'm telling here is uh, in my month to date, what I'm telling it is like, okay, a, a conditional uh, condition here. If the selected my year is a current, then just return the selected my year. If the selected my year is a previous, and um, then just go back one month then again this is a time intelligence function calculating the previous month uh, value for the same measure uh, do check out my time intelligence playlist i have tons of videos on time intelligence so basically what we're telling it is using a selected measure if the measure name is current then do this if measure name is previous then perform this calculation how this is going to make a difference let's go back to our power bi here i'm going to use it as in a slicer for now here um, but you can put that as in a as a page level filter or whatever way you want to use it i select mtd here now as soon as i select mtd uh, what it is doing is if we look at the August, we don't have any, our data start from August. That's why we don't have any previous month data. But as soon as I go in September, if we go in September, what we see is September has current month 281 and the previous month 169. That's what it is coming up, right? Open from the previous month. So now we are comparing each KPI with the previous month and showing it on the rows. And one more advantage, we have one single logic where we are calculating the previous month calculation, right? Because we are not using four different years for our previous month as well. So theoretically, originally we have like one, two, three, four, four for this month and four for eight month, right? Uh, um, four for the previous month. So we had eight years. Now we have only four years and uh, two placeholder my years uh, i'm just using those placeholder two because make the logic when to calculate the previous month so what we have here is now current month and previous month and we are showing it on the rows that's one advantage we reduce the number of rows that's the uh, number of my years second we put our logic in one single place right if we need to make a logical change i will just go into my calculation group uh, called CG period and go to my calculation item called MTD and we'll just make the logic change there. Now another advantage here is now I'm just using the previous month if I want to extend it to be okay I want to see my this uh, year to date with the previous year to date so what I can do is now I don't have to create more my years for the year to date what I did is Otherwise, if I have to do it without calculation groups, I have to create four my years for my year to date for the current month and four my years for the, uh, for the previous year to date as well. What I did is I went in a calculation groups again. Uh, let me bring that up here. Give me one second. Here it is. And then in YTD, what I did is same thing. If selected my year is current, then I want my calculate to be whatever my year we are seeing on the rows. Uh, give me dates year to date and again this is our time intelligence function when it is a previous then go back by one year and uh, that's pretty much what we want to do current and previous and if let's say for example i'm using any other my year except from current and previous then i want that my year to be shown as it is i don't want to apply my logic into any other my year so that's why my current and previous the place placeholder my years are helping me to drive the logic in those cases. Otherwise, I want to show the whatever my year has been used. So how does this make a difference? So let's go and select the YTD here. As you can see, now we have a 106, let's go back to MTD. It's a 169 in August, 169 and 281. So if I go to YTD, now open is running total, right? Every uh, month it's gonna add up and at the year it is gonna uh, turn um, reset. So now I'm seeing the running total for my current, uh, for my um, open, close, outstanding and close road rate. Similarly, the previous one, the, we are not seeing anything here. The reason behind that is because this is a yearly comparison. There's no data in 
August 2018 or September 2018. So there's no running total. But as soon as we go to August 2020, you can see in open is uh, 3064. That is like uh, August 2024. And 169 is August 2019 data. And if we go back to August 2019, that's uh, 169. And September is 450. If we go to September 2020, what we see is um, should be uh, 450. Oh, I have to change um, my year to date calculation. Sorry, it was wrong. So basically we want to go back uh, one year and then use dates YTD to get the correct numbers. Uh, there are videos on my time intelligence playlist on how to do this. So now again, going back here is what we see here is we are seeing the running total of our previous year um, and also the running total of the current year again. I did a mistake in my year to date calculation for the previous year, but I have to, if I had a multiple my years, I have to do that change at multiple places. So here I had did the change in one single place and it worked. Now with this thing, it's so easy. I can extend it to whatever, like trailing 12 months, whatever two things, what I can do now with this thing is, uh, I can add more KPIs. Um, I just need to go to my, um, my CG KPI, uh, calculation group and add as an KPI and that will show up in here that's the first thing second thing is I don't have to create the previous you know uh, calculations because the logic is already in the period uh, calculation group and I can add more periods here as well TTM last six months whatever we want to do that so basically we have reduced the number of uh, my years we able to bring our my years on the rows in the matrix visual we can add more time period uh, calculations in our um, in our cg period and we have the logic in one single place where if we want to make any change we will do it one place and it will replicate to everything else uh, I, I personally found this is very, very interesting, uh, but I, here is something for you guys. Like, how about if you guys want to have a current and previous, let's say I go month to date, and you also want to add a variance and variance percentage. Like if you want to add two more calculation items, how you will do that? And maybe I will leave that with you guys uh, to solve uh, something to play with. I will upload this PBX file in the description of this video. So take that down and try to come up with a solution like how you can have the absolute variance, current, previous variance, and then the various percentage. Let me know how you will solve that. Until next video, have a great day and make sure to subscribe my channel. Uh, Lomo stuff is coming up and uh, now my system is all up and running. So I will be bringing Lomo videos. Until next video, have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Cheers.